गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स हैव यू फिनिश्ड योर प्रेयर थैंक यू நான் ஒரு நல்ல ஆசிரியர் நான் உங்களுக்கு தாயாகவும் தந்தையாகவும் இருந்த முறையாக அன்போடு கல்வி போதிப்பேன் நான் ஒரு நல்ல ஆசிரியர் நான் உங்களுக்கு தாயாகவும் தந்தையாகவும் இருந்த முறையாக அன்போடு கல்வி போதிப்பேன் நான் ஒரு நல்ல ஆசிரியர் நான் உங்களுக்கு தாயாகவும் தந்தையாகவும் இருந்த முறையாக அன்போடு கல்வி போதிப்பேன் குட் மார்னிங் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் ஸோ டேக் யுவர் சோசியல் சயின்ஸ் புக் கம் டு பேஜ் நம்பர் ஒன் தேர்ட்டி ஃபைவ் வி வில் மூவ் டு த நெக்ஸ்ட் டாபிக் த கிரேட் நார்தன் பிளைன்ஸ் so in the last class we discuss about the the northern mountains so the northern mountains includes the trans himalayas the himalayas and the purvanchal hills okay ma so the trans himalayas it is located in jammu and kashmir and it was also called as how was the trans himalayas otherwise called as yeah tibetan himalayas then name some ranges in the trans himalayas region yeah jaskar ladakh kailash and the karakoram then himalayas so what are the main divisions of himalayas yeah himatri then himachal then shivaliks okay was in himalayas so you can found many glaciers so yes sir name some glaciers uh, gangotri yamunotri siachen then which is the world highest peak a yeah, mount everest So the height of Mount Everest is yeah 8848 meter so it is located in which country India or Nepal yeah Nepal Mount Everest is located in Nepal then name some hill stations that you found in Himachal yeah very good then finally we saw about Purvanchal hills so the hills which are located in northeastern states were collectively called as purvanchal hills so name the hills that were included in purvanchal hills yeah very good then finally we saw about the importance of himalayas in today's class we saw we will see the next physiographic division of india the great northern plains the great northern plains so this fertile plain lies to the south of the northern mountains so uh, last class we saw about the himalayas and the northern mountains no so to the south of those northern mountains so this fertile plain lies then this plain is one of the most extensive stretches of the alluvium that is this plain is widely distributed with alluvial soil in the world and is deposited with rivers such as indus ganga brahmaputra and the tributaries so this plain is deposited by the rivers such as indus ganga brahmaputra along with their tributaries then the total length of the plain is about 2400 km the total length of the plain is 2400 km and the width varies from 242 to 320 km so total length 2400 km with the 242 to 320 km then its width increases from east to west so from east to west the width of the plain was increasing then it covers an area of over 7 lakh square km then the great plains of india is remarkably a homogeneous surface so homogeneous surface means so there is no much difference so when you see the plain so when you see the uh, overall area of the plain there is no much difference so just it uh, look like a slope so slope means so one edge is high uh, higher and another edge is uh, lower okay so like a uh, hill so like a lower area of a hill so like it is like a slope now so if you see this plane there is no much difference so just it look like a slope so imperceptible that is very small therefore unable to see and felt yeah, so you can't see uh, can't see much difference in this plane then they are formed by the depositional process of the himalayan and vindhyan rivers so they are located between himalayas and vindhya satpura range so in the central india you can find vindhya and satpura ranges Okay, so they also give ordinate so uh, some rivers okay, so the great plains is located just in between the himalayan range and vindhya satpura range okay, then these rivers so the rivers originate from himalayas and vindhya so deposit enormous quantity of sediments so sediments you know what do you mean by sediment 
yeah, something like dust, mud, soil, etc. were settled in a place. So, were uh, settled in a place due to some natural activity. Okay, ma. Sediments deposited along with the food hills and the flood plains. Okay, ma. So, the rivers deposit enormous quantity of sediments. So, they collect a lot of dust, a lot of things and deposit in the food hills and the flood plains. Then, the important characteristic features of sediments deposition in the plains areas are as follows. So, based on the deposition of sediments, the plain is classified into five. So, let us see one by one. So, this slide shows the sediment deposition. Yeah, so, the important characters of sediments deposition and how they are classified. Yeah, so, they are classified as Barber Plain, the Tarai Tract, the Bangar Plain, the Kadar Plains and the Deltas. Yeah, so, the Barber Plain. So, most it consists of stones, so not suitable for cultivation. Then, if you see the Tarai Tract, so it consists of thick forest mainly. Then the Bangar plain means, so it consists of older alluviums. Okay, ma. Then it is also useful for agriculture. Then Kadar plain, so it is the highly fertile soil. Then finally Delta, so uh, the place where the river meets the ocean. Okay, so, uh, the place where the rivers so mingle with the, the sea uh, called as Delta. Yeah, so these are the five important characteristics of the sediment deposits and okay ma, let us see one by one the barber plain so this plain is made up of gravels and unassorted sediments deposited by the himalayan rivers so gravels means small stones so this plain consists of small stones so they are just located below just to close below to the northern mountains. So it consists of mostly small stones and not much differentiated sediments. Then the porosity of this plain is so high that most of the small streams flow over this region disappear. That is the porosity is very poor. That is it won't allow water to hold. Yes, it won't hold water. Yeah. So there is no water surface. Yes, even though water flow in this region, it won't hold it. So it will disappear, uh, disappear soon. Okay, well, so it is not suitable for cultivation. Then its width varies from 8 to 15 km. Uh, if you see the Babar Plain, it is wider in western plains that is in Jammu division than in the east. So if you see the great northern plains commonly, uh, it is the width increases from east to west but if you see the barber plain it is wider in western plain than in the east already i told you so it can't hold water so because the porosity of this plain is so high so it allows water to pass through quickly so it is not suitable for cultivation but only big trees with large root that is trees with large root can strongly grow in this region the Tarai tract. It is a zone of excessive dampness that is too much wet here. Yeah, so it consists of thick forest and rich wildlife. So they are located just below the, just to south of the Babar plain and is, it is the zone of excessive dampness that is you can see more wet in this region and thick forest and rich wildlife. So most of the Himalayan forest are just located in this region. Then the width of this belt is 15 to 30 km. Yeah. So the Tarai is wider in eastern parts of the Great Plains, especially in Brahmaputra Valley due to heavy rainfall. So already I told you this is covered with thick forest. So rainfall is heavy in this region. So the Tarai region is wider in eastern parts, especially in Brahmaputra. Yeah, especially in uh, around the Bangladesh region. Yeah, so Bangladesh region, this region, this tract is very wider. Then in nowadays in many states, the Tarai forest have been cleared for cultivation. So because it is uh, rich in fertile soil and also it is uh, uh, rich in water. Okay, well, so the Tarai tract is nowadays cleared for cultivation. The Bangar Plains, so under the Kadar Plains. So the Bangar Plains represent the upland alluvial tracts of the Great Plains of India formed by the older alluvium. That is the Bangar Plains are called as older alluvium. If you see the Kadar Plains, it was called as newer alluvium. So Bangar Plains, they are lies just above the flood limit of the rivers. So they are just lie above the flood limit of the rivers. If you say the Kadar Plain, they are just lie in the flood limit. Yeah, so the soil, the Bangar plain soil is uh, dark in color, they are rich in humus. So humus means a substance made of, from dead leaves and plants added to soil to help plants and to grow. 
you know, so substance made from dead leaves and plants added to the soil to help plants to grow. So the bangal beans are rich in humus content, well drained and suitable for agriculture. Likewise, the kadar beans are also suitable for agriculture. You know, so because when compared to bangal plains, the kadar beans are very uh, highly fertile. Yeah. Why means? Because the rivers collect various sediments uh, through its path and deposit it in the kadar plains. Yeah. So uh, that's why the kadar plains consist of mostly newer alluvium soil. When bangar plains consist of older alluvial soil means the kadar plains consist of newer alluvium soil. So every year, so the kadar plains so refresh itself, so enrich itself every year. Yeah. So especially during the rainy season. Then the kadar plains consist of sand silt clay and mud so silt clay mud so almost based on the water quantity in soil it was classified so sand you know so won't allow water to stay in it but silt clay and mud so consist of mostly water in it so water quantity is high in this region so it is highly fertile soil so this slide shows the difference between the Bangar plains and the Kadar plains. So the main difference is the Bangar is the older alluvium, the Kadar is the new alluvium. You know, so the Bangar plains, so located, so found just above the, the flood limit of the rivers. That is just above the, the Kadar plains. Okay, ma. Then it is also both are fertile soil only. But when you see, uh, compare the Kadar plains are more fertile soil. So the Kadar plains are located just above the rivers yeah so just above the flood limit of the rivers so these are the common difference then delta so the triangle shaped fertile land at the mouth of ganga and brahmaputra rivers is called as sundarban delta that is the ganga and brahmaputra meet at bangladesh and merge into the bay of bengal yeah, so the place where it meets the sea so the place where the Ganga and the Brahmaputra rivers so the Ganga and the Brahmaputra so divided into many uh, distributaries and finally reach Bay of Bengal now so in that region they form a delta which was called a Sundarban Delta so this Sundarban Delta is the biggest and the fastest growing delta in the world then it is an area of deposition as the river flows in this tract sluggishly. Uh, so in this area, the river water flows is very slow. So sluggish means very slow. So imagine a water stream is moving. So another water stream is uh, joined in that uh, water body in a perpendicular direction means you can see at the nearest point, at the meeting point, you can see it is very slow. Oh, yeah. So likewise, so in uh, wherever the river meets the sea, wherever the river merges with the sea, you can find the speed of the river is slow. Oh, yeah. So likewise, so in Sundarban Delta, the Ganges and Brahmaputra river flows here is very slow. So it uh, it is an area of the the river flows in this track sluggishly. So slowly it uh, merges with the Bay of Bengal. Then the delta plain consists of mainly old mud, new mud and marsh. Yeah. That is it consists of old soil, new soil and marsh. So what do you mean by marsh? So an area of land that is always soft and wet because there is nowhere for the water to flow away to. So marsh means so the soil is very soft. So because always water is there. So it consists of marshy soil. Then in the delta region, the uplands are called as charts while the marshy areas are called as bills. Okay, so the marshy area, that is the soil, the soft soil areas was called as bills. Then the upper region of the delta region was called as charts. So the delta region is divided into two. The upper region is called as charts and the lower region is called as bills. Okay. Ma. Okay. How was the northern plains divided based on the deposition of sediments? Yeah, very good. Then, which plain consists of newer alluvium soil? Yeah, Kadar plain. Then, which plain is not suitable for cultivation? It's among the five different plains of North India, based on the sediments deposited. Which plain is not suitable for cultivation? Yeah, the Babar plain. Why? Because the porosity of this plain is so high. Yeah. Then, finally, 
Russia, which is the biggest and fastest growing delta in the world. Sundarban delta. Very good. Where the Sundarban delta was found? Yeah. So it is the triangle shaped fertile land at the mouth of Ganga and Brahmaputra river. So the mouth of the mouth of the Ganga Brahmaputra river, you can find the Sundarban delta. Yeah. So next we will move to the topographical characteristics of so topography means so the physical characteristics of the northern plains now yeah so till now we classified the northern plains based on the sediments deposited now we will see the different types of different characteristic features of northern plains based on its topographical future yeah so based on its physical future then rajasthan plains so the topographical characters and the northern plains are divided into rajasthan plain Punjab Haryana Plain, Ganga Plain and finally the Brahmaputra Plain. So first we will see about Rajasthan Plain. So it is located to the west of Aravalli Range. So Rajasthan Plain is located to the west of Aravalli Range. It, the total area covered by Rajasthan Plain is 1,75,000 square kilometer. So the total area covered by Rajasthan Plain is 1,75,000 square kilometer. So what is the total area covered by the, the Great Northern Plains? So all over the Great Northern Plains uh, cover how much area? Yeah, 7 lakh square kilometer. Rajasthan plain covers 1 lakh 75,000 square kilometer. Then the Rajasthan plain is formed by the deposition of the river Loni. So Rajasthan plain is deposited by the river Loni and the long vanished river Saraswati. So the vanished river means it does not exist no more. So there is no river Saraswati. So the Saraswati river initially deposited its sediments in this region. Then, so in Rajasthan, you can find a large number of, so a more number of salt lakes. That is, the lake contains salt water. Yeah. So, uh, the most important one is the Sambar Salt Lake located near Jaipur. So, Jaipur, you know, it is called as, so there is another one nickname for the city Jaipur. Yeah, the pink city. So, the Sambar Salt Lake is located just near to Jaipur, yes, it was the important one. It was also called as Pushkar Lake. Yes, so Sambar Salt Lake was also called as Pushkar Lake. Then the Thar Desert, so the only desert region in India. It is also known as the Great Indian Desert and it is a large arid region. That is desert region in the northwestern part of Indian subcontinent. Yes, it is located in the northwestern part of India and covers an area of 2 lakh square kilometer and it forms a natural boundary between India and Pakistan. So the India and Pakistan, the boundary line. So the Thar Desert, so form a natural boundary between India and Pakistan. And it is the world seventh largest desert. So there are a lot of deserts, so Sahara, uh, Gopi, Atacama, likewise. So there are a lot of deserts. So among the deserts, it ranks seventh. Then it uh, lies in the western part of Aravalli range. So uh, the Thar Desert just uh, lies above the, that is just uh, lies to the western part of Aravalli range and it covers uh, two thirds of Rajasthan state. So Rajasthan means you remember the uh, always desert region only. So two thirds of this Rajasthan state co was covered by uh, Thar Desert. Then the, there are two major divisions in Thar Desert. Yeah, so the Thar Desert is divided into two. So one is called as Marustali and another one is called as Bangar. So Marustali means so actual desert region. Yeah. So that is fully desert region. Then semi-desert region. So Bangar was called as semi-desert region. That is partly it was desert. Then many different types of sand dunes and salt lakes are seen here. So salt lakes was called as Dund in this region. Yeah. So sand dunes. So sand dunes means so you can uh, find uh, the desert like uh, sea waves. Yeah, so if you see sea waves, so uh, it look like uh, upper layer, upper layer uh, like that, no. So uh, that was called as uh, sand dunes. So if you see the desert region, it uh, look like a wave formation. Okay, wow. so many type of sand dunes was uh, seen here and also salt lakes. So many salt lakes are seen here. Then the Punjab Haryana plain. It lies to the northeast of the Great Indian Desert. Uh, it lies to the, the north of, east of the Great Indian Desert and just to east of the, the Gangetic Plains. 
yeah so this plane is found over an area of 1.75 square lakh square kilometer so the total area covered by punjab karyana was 1.75 lakh square kilometer then these planes are formed by the deposition of the rivers satluj bias and ravi so the three rivers so satluj bias and ravi so deposit their sediments in this plains yeah then this plain act as the water divide so wherever the water body divides it was called as dob yeah so in hindi you know dob means two yeah so in this region the river divided into two okay wow. so the river divided into two so there are several dob found in this region then the two major water set divides are yamuna satluj ganga yamuna so in the punjab haryana plains only uh, yamuna satluj river divides then the ganga yamuna rivers the meet the ganga yamuna river meet in this plains only then the ganga plains and the brahmaputra plain so ganga so one of the major river of india you know set of arms here plain this plain extend from yamuna river in the west to bangladesh in the east then the total area covered by this plain is about 3.75 lakh square kilometer the total area covered by ganga plain was 3.75 lakh square kilometer so what was the total area covered by the northern plains yeah 7 lakh square kilometer so in that 7 lakh square kilometer 3.75 lakh square kilometer was occupied by ganga plain so um, now you can know so which is the largest plain of india yeah the ganga plain the river ganga and its tributaries such as gagra gandak kosi yamuna chambal betwa etc constitute this plain by their sediments and make a great plain in india so there are several tributaries many tributaries to river ganga so the tributaries along with river ganga uh deposit their sediments and thus make it a great plain yeah then if you see the general slope of the entire plain that is upper middle and lower ganga plains it is towards east and southeast yeah so the if you see the general slope of the entire plain it is towards east and southeast then the brahmaputra plain so it is located in the state of assam so brahmaputra the river originates in china and it enters into india through arunachal pradesh and to form the plains in the state of assam it is a low level plain located in the eastern part of great plains yeah, so the northern plains in brahmaputra plain uh, it is located in the east of the great plains yeah, and is formed by the deposits of river brahmaputra so brahmaputra so river deposits their sediments in assam and thus form the brahmaputra plains the total area covered by brahmaputra plain is 56275 square kilometer and this plain creates a alluvial fans and the marshy tracts so alluvial fans so if you see uh, alluvial fans means so the alluvial soil deposit here uh, if you look means it look like a fan shaped that is it look like a art shaped yeah and the marshy tracts so that is the soil is very soft in this region yeah, so it look like a alluvial fan and uh, and the soil is Uh, soft in nature okay students thank you so complete your homework just to recall whatever i have taught you finish your homework thank you students